healthy behaviors. Healthy behaviors are important for our journey and our evolution. And, you know, a lot of people have stigma around it and belief systems and things like that. Now I have a, nat you know, um, a bachelor's degree in nutrition and dietetics. And so I have that ability there, um, you know, and that knowledge that comes along with it. And so that was part of my um, going to college and learning, you know, a part of my journey. And so what I've seen through that and I learned through it, I mean, it can be helpful to um, do that, but how they have it structured is not 100% accurate in what we actually need to fulfill our body because everybody's different and they, they gridlock everybody into like the pyramid saying that everybody needs this, but not everybody needs that. You know, everybody has their own genetic makeup um, based on who they are, where they've been in the past lives that has brought them here today. So not a lot everybody uh, needs certain foods um and you know I, i'm not a medical doctor so i'm not putting that out there for you but that's been my journey my understanding and i don't eat any meats um, and i'm not saying that you shouldn't because you should definitely check in with yourself if you need it but that's just for me and so my journey my practice up to this point has been you know that it, it's um it's actually hurting me to eat that you know on different levels because my body actually doesn't need it right and you can absorb it from other things if you do need certain nutrients so with that being said and i you know again you know i i have the degree i've had the experience and what my guides and my energy and my vibration and my body is saying when i eat these things it doesn't feel good to me it makes me do not feel well Right. And so it's really up to you in your own journey. You know, you seek your own advice and this is not advice for you, but it's part of my journey. And so I'm sharing it with you because if you eat something, you don't feel right after you eat it. There's a lot of things going on there beyond, you know, this pyramid that they expect us to eat from. Right. And so it creates conditions for us um, that maybe may lead to illness or, um, you know, disease within our body. And so definitely check that out. You know, there's a couple books out there on it already, you know, um, eating by blood type or, you know, different things like that. And so you want to kind of take a lot of things into consideration when you're eating the food, right? And so eating healthy, you know, and trying to negate all the junk foods out there, which kind of contributes to more illness and issues that we have. And a lot of times we eat emotionally um, if we have unresolved issues. Um, or if we grew up in a family that was like, um, here's food to help you deal with your issues, right? <laughs> so it's a coping method. Um, and so that can lead to obesity or overeating or eating disorders. Um, it can lead to a lot of different things. Now, um, this was really interesting that um, when I was working in the addiction clinic, you know, a lot of people were having their past lives come up in this lifetime um, and they were people who actually um, were part of the holocaust and so they were starving and so being in the eating disorder uh, facility they unconsciously had that program growing and so they were going through these eating disorder situations right with starvation and um, purging you know and stuff like that and so that is like a replay of it in a different life and a different outcome for a different perspective, you know? And so that is the result of that experience in the past life that hasn't been dealt with. So it's playing out in a lifetime in a different way. And if we don't have that understanding, um, then we are not gonna understand, you know, why we have uh, these experiences. And so putting into place healthy behaviors, healthy eating, um, stepping away from, you know, certain things that we're putting and ingesting our body because our body has memory and um it, it's just living on memory and it has it it has to adjust its intelligence your body it has to adjust to it it has to digest it, it has to contemplate it um things uh, certain things will take longer to digest uh, versus other things and so it, it may not flow through your body as much as needed and then you know, if you're constipated all the time, you have um, digestive issues. And so really taking a look at what you're eating and what you're putting in your body is really important for your spiritual journey. And then also, you know, things like people use um, like 
alcohol, drugs to get them to there. But if you do things in the right way, you don't need that, right? If you do your meditation, if you eat healthy, you do self-healing, you don't need to do, you know, things like drugs to take you into that space, right? Um, it's only going to be a temporary situation. It's not going to be long lasting and it's only going to help you on a certain level. And so it's only during that temporary space. It's not something that's going to continue. You know, it's something that you really have to do as a life change to make it sustainable, right? And so, yes, it's a glimpse, but it's, that's all it is. It's a glimpse into something else, right? And so if you think that's what it's going to be, it can lead into an addiction or a problem because then you, every time you're going to want to have a glimpse, you're going to go back into that. It's like um, spiritual chasing, I want to say. It's kind of like every time you um, want to have a, like, a rush of a spiritual rush, right? You're like this seeker that goes to get all these... Um, uh, I don't know how you want to express it, but it's like when you're like, oh, I'm going here because there's a spiritual experience I'm going to have, but then you don't have any. And then it's kind of like becomes like an addiction to spiritual experiences. So then at some point, if you keep doing it, then it may lead into something else that you don't want, right? Because you're trying to get it outside of yourself instead of having it within yourself. And so uh, the process of be healthy behaviors instead of chasing um, your spiritual experiences, right? And I know people who do that. They go from one place to one place to one place, hop in just to have a spiritual experience, uh, which can be helpful because it gives you some insight and in everything. The experience, it can be fun, but it's kind of like um, like a rush. That's experience, the word that I'm looking for. It's like a rush, you know? And so, you know, with that, it's, it's not a constant thing. It's just um, like an inspirational um, insights, temporary space that you're in but if you do it as a practice every day like meditating um, going out in nature watching what you're putting into your body a lot of healing comes with that right and so you can start getting into a place where you are living in that space you know it doesn't have to be a rush it doesn't have to be temporary um, you can tune in and, and get your information because um, you'll have built that right foundation whereas if you don't have the foundation to have the uh, direct connection, then you're getting all these little rushes everywhere, right? And so you become addicted to that. I'm um, going here, going there, doing this, doing that, trying to get all the, <laughs> you know, the um, fun, excitement, you know, it's like entertainment. Um, and so, you know, without the full practice and the understanding how, uh, you know, healthy behaviors is important for you and not going to McDonald's, not going to Chick-fil-A, not going to Red Lobster, um, not eating drinking soda or things like that, um, how that interplays uh, with your, your body and the, you know, the chemicals and everything, how it is that it's processing and having to work over time. Um, but definitely something to check out. Um, I'm not saying that you have to eat raw and clean, you know, everything, but just be mindful about what you're putting in the body. Is it really helpful? Because like when you're wanting something, and I'm just going to put this out there because like for and how spirit show me is like because it's all connected. And so you get your stuff unless you're doing it yourself. You're getting it, you know, from other places and you don't know what's going into it. When other people are making it, they're putting energy into it. If they're having a bad day, guess what's going into your food, that energy, you know. And so whatever their thoughts are, whatever they're doing with their hands, because with our hands, we're picking up an energy and we're putting energy into it. Um, what we're manifesting, creating. And so if you're engulfing that and putting that into your body, you're taking in all the energy as well. And so also like if you're, um, and I think Sadhguru talks about it too, like, you know, when you're offering food, you know, you want to be careful where you're receiving it from and then how you're being with your energy and interactions with other people because we can accept things, you know. So that's why I guess they don't shake hands, things like that. But, and... Like if we're wanting meats, you know, we're actually slaughtering, um, unless you're doing it yourself, you're slaughtering uh, animals and it may not be as um, humane <laughs> as we would think it would be, you know, so just because we can have a meal, right? And so not that there's anything wrong or right about it, it's just how it's being done, what is being done, what energies are you taking, are they giving it chemicals, are they giving it hormones, because you're ingesting it all. What is the state of the animal when they kill it? You know, 
energy, right? And so taking a look at all these um, situations can um, help you to understand where may, uh, if I eat something, how do I feel after, right? And so keeping track of the energy and vibration, how it feels within me and how long does it take to digest? Is it if I am, I am able to eliminate you know, as, as I need to, or am I, is it going to harm my body, you know, from staying within my body for a long period of time? Because your, your food should go through. It shouldn't be staying there for days, <laughs> right? Absorbing energy, because at that point, it's just rotting in your body, <laughs> you know, and then it's not healthy. It's like uh, decaying in your body, like compost, right? And so you don't want that. You want your food to flow through. Right? And so what is it that you're eating that is flowing through? What isn't? What's feeling good to me? What is the energy that I'm accepting you know, with this? And then what is it that I really need? Right? And so just making note, um, keeping track, writing down your emotions from it, how you're looking at it, what is it? And just allow it to be you, right? Just because it works for somebody else doesn't mean it's for you. And just because it's for you doesn't mean it's for another person. So just take a look at it as it is for you at where you are on your journey at your point. And so as you're doing yoga and meditation and healthy behaviors and things like that, you know, just take a look at it. And you may evolve to the point where, okay, I don't feel like I need that anymore because that doesn't match my energy and vibration. But where you are is where you're going to be a match to it. So if you're not working on yourself and you're at the beginning of the journey, you may need those heavier, dense foods because you're in alignment with it. But the more you awaken and the more you shift your consciousness and awareness, you're going to, you may feel like the, um, the need for lighter foods, which is more uh, fruits and vegetables, lighter foods, you know, that aren't so heavy and dense. So you can evolve you know because if you're eating heavy dense foods which are more like meats things like that fats um, it's going to keep you in a lower density versus raise you up and because food sources have densities right and so whether you're eating plants or you're eating animal it's going to be a different energy vibration and density right and so that's what you're putting in your body the emotions the effects the car, not, I don't want to say karmic, but the actions of what is, because there's no replications for doing it except for the experience that's going to be the result of it. It's not as a punishment. And I've talked about that karmic as not as a punishment, but as the action, the result of what's happening. So you can see it and learn from it, right? And then change it. And so taking a look at, you know, how and what we're putting in our body is important for your evolution, you know, on the spiritual journey. Um, and so that's been very helpful if for me along my journey. Um, and so kind of just putting that out there for you. So don't always just go by that, um, you know, the whole pyramid thing, because that's kind of just a, a basis. It's not all a whole 100% true. And so just go by what you're eating. And how I was led to do that was to do a set point. And so my set point, which I was guided to do and just sharing it, you don't have to do it and it's not suggested, but I was guided by spirit to do a three-day water cleanse. And so I did a three-day water cleanse. And so there my body has did a, a reset, right? And then I was able to start in, implementing food and I was in, implementing the food. I was keeping track, okay, how does this make me feel? Does this feel good? Does this energize me? Does it wear me down? Does it bring me down? Does it make me feel good? How's my energy, my vibration, my emotions after eating this? And how's it affecting me, right? And so I kind of knew from there what I should be putting in my body and what I shouldn't, right? Instead of somebody telling me out of a book by the Nutrition Society to eat the pyramid, right? I allow myself through spirit to help me to guide myself in what's good for me or not, right? And so that was some of the things that went. And so I, I got rid of them, not all at once, but as I evolved through my path, certain things just fell away. And so, okay, so it was no longer needed. So I stopped eating that because it didn't resonate with me anymore. It was more at a place where I was just getting into fruits and vegetables. It just happened naturally. I didn't set any tension, you know, except for, you know, being on the journey. And there's a bee swarming around me. Um, but yeah, it, it just naturally falls away. You don't have to intentionally do it and you don't have to do it all at once because that's too much of a jump, you know, I would say. But if you're feeling called to do that, then then do it. But if, you know, it's okay if you just do it one at a time, what, just knock off what doesn't resonate with you anymore, right? If it doesn't feel good, you know, don't do it, 
right? Why do it? Just because other people do it or because that's what you've been taught or your mind's telling you to do. Now your body runs on um, programming and memory, right? And so you may find that little bit of resistance in giving it up um, if you're not working on yourself because your, your body's going to be like, okay, time to eat. Okay, time to do this. It has this clock going, right? This reminder kind of scenario going on. And it's like, okay, at this time I did this and at this time I did this and at this, because you're running on the old programs, right? And it's kind of like if you're um, having a drink, you may want to smoke. And if you're having a smoke, you may want to drink because they're associated, right? And so because one, you need the other and the other, you need the other. And so you've associated them. So they're going to trigger the other to happen. Right. So to break that, you have to kind of break both of them. So <laughs> you kind of want to look at that, too, you know, as far as healthy behaviors, um, breaking down your cycles and your patterns of what you've created, because we've created the patterns by accepting them. You know, and a lot of times just being in the environment we've created. And I was kind of talking about that this morning with the, the smoking. I grew up in a family where they smoked. And so I started smoking. And then, like, even though I had the awareness, that I didn't like it. Why am I smoking? But it was just this thing that happened because you're, you're kind of brainwashed into it. <laughs> you know, you're just repeating these cycles that you have from your experience, right? And so I learned about that as a child growing up. And then eventually, you know, I was able to stop doing that. But I learned how it was associated with certain things that I connected to that I learned from from them that they were doing it and I started doing it. And so then I started, you know, and then having to break that down and then eventually, you know, no longer smoking as a teenager um, and haven't been smoking, you know, since then. Periodically, I picked it up and then put it back down because I was like, yeah, no, this is. <laughs> but now when I smell smoke around me or I see other people smoking, I just get nauseous. Right? It just makes me so nauseous within myself because my body's not there anymore. And that's a good indicator, you know, that. You know, you're past that, you're beyond that. And so for my body to reject that just by in being around the smell of smoke um, definitely keeps me from it, <laughs> you know, not to go back to it. Because my body's telling me, no, that's not healthy for you. Not at this time in your life where you are. That maybe back then when I needed it or when I did it, you know, it resonated with me because that was my environment, but not now. And so your environmental factors are huge too in your spiritual journey. So um, if you're, you know, you're growing up in a family that eats meat or is a vegan, you know, that's going to be a set point for you. You're already going to be starting out at that. And so whether that resonates with you or not is really up to you. Now, a great way to think about that is like if you move, like if you're living in a certain situation, environment, and you move out of it and then it changes, it's basically just because your environment is experiencing that where you are at that time. When you move out of it, it no longer exists because you, it really doesn't, you don't need it. You really don't need it, right? Because if it changes and you don't take it with you without changing it intentionally or, you know, having the understanding or being on the, the spiritual journey, it's just because of your environment. So your environment is an influential factor. So like I said, prior to coming in, we make our intentions for our life and then coming in, being born to that parent, parent which will um, help enforce that for you. Um, by being in that environment that they set up for you, coming from those two experiences or whoever else is in the family, um, help create that environment for you to experience from that into the rest of your life. Now, as you move out of there, you know, your whole life may change 100%, <laughs> you know, um, and whatever way that's going to be. But your spiritual journey, um, you know, trying to work on yourself, have a healthy lifestyle, you know, it, you want to kind of look at yourself and not um, your environment, you know, what other people don't go by that, that's not going to help you any, just tune into yourself and go by what's, what are your needs, right, and so it's pretty much everything that um, kind of want to put out there about that, but yeah, if you have any questions or want to book a session, you know, on healthy behaviors, um, lifestyles, on how to change it, we can um, book a session and, you know, contemplate on that and see what would be the best direction for you. Again, I'm not a doctor. You should always seek help, you know, as far as professional, I want to say a doctor, nurse, you know, because they give stigma around, oh, you're, you have a bachelor's degree and you're a coach, but you're not a registered dietitian or a doctor. So, Again, I just do my own practice, my own spiritual journey, what I was connected and guided to do. And so 
if you're on a spiritual journey and you know are looking to do the same thing and find out what's good for you um great way is to set up a you know book a session and we can do some coaching on that around that um or you know again we have the videos here if you don't want to book a session you know you can always tune into that and start meditating uh, connect to yourself your higher self and find out what is your direction um but also seek the doctor or the registered dietitian if you have any concerns. Um, so I want to just make sure I put that out there. All right, well, um, that's been my uh, journey, you know, as far as the healthy eating behaviors. Um, yeah, if you have any other questions, uh, just put them below. And thanks for tuning in. Happy journeys.